So in summary, any sort of changes can have pretty unexpected results. And baselining may well be the answer. Of course, the way I've demonstrated it is trivially simple. It's actually quite a lot more complicated than that. But in general, baselining gives you a guarantee that performance will never degrade. But over time, as the jobs run, performance will slowly improve. Well, performance will improve. So improvements are held back for a short period of time until they're tested and proven to be beneficial. If you have the licenses, the process can be totally automatic. If you don't have the licenses, SE2 or whatever, there are still programmatic techniques that we can use to get a very similar effect. Great, John. Uh, thanks for the time for the questions. Um, do you need to worry about purging older baselines, perhaps space issues in SysOx? Yes, you do. Um, there are all sorts of defaults. You can specify a space budget in the SysOx table space, um, and it will overwrite baselines once it reaches that space budget. There's also a default for unused baselines being dropped. So yes, there's automation, but the automation might not be suitable for any particular establishment. It might well mean that you had umpteen gigabytes of sysorcs and you don't want all that. So yes, you've got to put some thought into that. Great. Um, related question, can you identify obsolete baselines and delete them? You can indeed. If you look at the view, DBA SQL plan baselines, you've got a lot of information for each one. When it was created, you'll show me show how it was created. Um, let's see, is it enabled? Is it accepted? Can it be reproduced? Maybe there's some change, it means it's no longer useful. So you can get information about them, and then using the API, you can manually manipulate the environment with your manual acceptor baseline or the alter function lets you get rid of them, delete them, remove them, adjust them, fix them. You can change all of the attributes programmatically through this API. All right, great. Um, next question I think is a, sort of a, a wide open to SQL tuning, um, which John, I can point um, the, the students today at the uh, how to read the execution plan, um, but, but you'll, you'll direct me for the best path here, John. What parameters influence optimizer, the optimizer, that this plan is better than another? It, it doesn't, it isn't parameters, it tests the statement. It looks at the statement during the, the evolution process, and I evolved that plan through the auto task. It was automatically accepted, it was verified automatically. You can do it manually as well through the evolve procedures be evolve SQL plan baseline and that's a heavily overloaded function but what the evolution process does it simply tests the plan it probes the tables to see if the statistics are correct it partially runs the statements it experiments with different execution plans to see which one is better it gets its own timings it simply tests the statement and if you look at the report that comes out it does tell you, for example, how long it took. Yeah, the plan was verified in that many seconds. And so depending on the complexity of the statement, if the statement is you know, 500 lines of SQL and takes 500 and it takes five hours to run, it isn't gonna run the statement to completion, clearly, but it will still be able to start it off and try it and see how it gets on. And within limits, it will do what it can. The default limits are, for example, that it has only one hour to do it. You see those, these are all settings that can be changed, by the way. So, so uh, it's actually yeah. statistics, runtime statistics in a sense. In a sense it is, in a sense it's runtime statistics. Though for a huge query, of course, it can't run into completion. Great. John, there was also, um, the notion of SQL profiles. Uh, are they doing the same thing? They have a similar effect, don't they? 
Um, but SQL profiles, I don't much like profiles, uh, partly because, of course, there's licensing, the enterprise edition plus tuning pack, um, but also they're covering up problems. You know, the optimizer's fix coming up with a bad plan. The profile lets it correct that plan. It isn't fixing the problem of why did the optimizer get the wrong plan in the first place. And that's why I think baselining takes it to another level. It really does let Oracle work out what went wrong. What was wrong with the one plan? Why is another plan better? So yes, there's a big overlap, but it's a very different approach. Uh, stored outlines still available, John? Oh, they certainly are. Stored outlines, and I love stored outlines. Been around since eight point something. They're still there. They're officially deprecated. Uh, they're very easy to use. I must say, if you if as a get you out of trouble in a hurry technique, a stored outline might be the way to go. Um, there is, however, a procedure in DBS SPM to convert your stored outlines to. Oh, there we go. To convert your stored outlines to baselines. So yes, they're there, they still work, but pretty obviously Oracle wants you to move to better functionality because a stored outline is just a set of hints. There's no concept of evolution. You know, it freezes the statement for better or worse forever. You might have mentioned this, John, but uh, SQL profiles uh, do require enterprise addition in the tuning pack. Just to note. Yeah, I think so. And there isn't much automation either. Um, it's the sort of thing where profile might be very useful for a while to get you out of trouble, but maybe a couple of years later, it's still there. And it might even be causing problems a couple of years down the line. You know, there's no concept of evolution or testing. It's, all, it's, not, it's not as rigid as stored outline because there is still hard parsing, but it isn't as flexible as the baselining mechanism. Uh, good timing. We're at the top of the hour. Thank you all very much for attending. Please keep John and I and skill builders in mind uh, for your uh, uh, administration requirements. Uh, let us assist you. Let us mentor you. Um, uh, you know, let us do the job for you. Uh, all of those things are possible. Uh, uh, thanks, Sam. Wendell, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll email you um, a response on that question. And we will be running more uh, webinars soon. Uh, we do stuff on the Apex side of the fence. Uh, we do stuff, stuff on the administration side. Uh, you guys are probably registered at the website with an interest in Oracle administration, so you got the notification on this. If you are interested in Oracle Apex, be sure you register on our website, skillbuilders.com, uh, for an interest in Apex, and you'll also get those notifications as well. We will convert this into a tutorial and post it on the website as a tutorial and email, email you when that is ready. Thanks so much, everybody, for attending. Hope to see you soon. Be safe.